guys, how are you? This is a build of the Revell 1 225 scale HMS Victory, Lord Nelson's flagship. I was going around, as you can see, on my local hobby shop and I found this little, I don't know what to call it, I will call it a gem. It's a very old kit, 1959 kit, uh, 269 parts. Um, unfortunately, old as it is, a lot of flash, um, a lot of ejector pin marks, some masts had holes in it. Um, it brings this very, I don't know what to say, poster, which is to commemorate uh, the anniversary of Trafalgar uh, battle. Um, these vac form sails, not bad, but um, well, you will see it the, the more ahead. And these paints from Ravel, which were for me well thin, they are fantastic paints. I don't have any complaints about it. Um, this kit is a love and hate um, relationship because the further I went ahead on the build, the more I loved uh, HMS Victory and um, the more difficulty I had building this kit, the more beauty this ship had. So. It was a bit controversy for me, but I really, really enjoyed building it. And um, I have here the Heller 1 100th scale one. So this one was a very good practice run for uh, the victory. Um, a very old kit, as I told you, a lot of flash. And it was necessary to be on a constant cleaning, sanding, scraping, and above all, dry fit. So I hope you guys enjoy this one. Um, it's not a perfect kit. It has some uh, fails, operator fails maybe on it, but I really, really, really love this one. And I really love HMS Victory. It is a beautiful, beautiful ship. Uh, I painted it on that mustard, classic mustard yellow. I know that nowadays it has a different color, okay guys? Um, I know the research was done and they changed the color for a more of a salmon tone color. However, I tried to find uh, both um, half of a, of a way between the mustard and the salmon, so it's yellow just the same, it's not the exact color. But it's the color I like and um, well I think it's the color we all have our models at home of HMS Victory um, but I really really enjoyed this one I hope you really enjoyed this video also as you can see this kit has a lot of flash so I after sanding it I primed uh, on light gray the, the pieces just to see if I could uh, observe a little bit more of flash to clean and even so you will see that in, in more ahead some pieces are already painted and I oh damn I found out a bit more flash so I had to re-clean it repaint it you know everything it had it really had a lot of flash and um, well let's just paint the stern of victory As you can see, I first gave a dry brush on the base color of black to highlight the details. Now a bit of a gold. It's yellow toned, so we have to build the yellow color. Uh, everything on dry brush, okay? And then on top of this gold, we apply the yellow. And we are going to work uh, from the inside to the outside. Some guys paint the black and then with a brush go on top of the detail. Well, I prefer doing several coats, several layers of dry brush. Then just make sure that 
that dry brushed line is perfect and then work on the excess paint that goes out due to the dry brush to the black to the base coat so I believe it's a better process on such a small scale uh, which was what uh, attracted me on this kit it is a small scale uh, you don't see too many 225 scale uh, on this subject I believe there are none except this one it is a considerable size the ship is very beautiful the detail is not bad it's very good indeed for for a 1959 kit yes it is awesome but um, I prefer working here as you can see on dry brush and then just make the black base color better
and I'm trying to uh, do a bit of a dry fit here. This kit needed a lot um, just to make sure that uh, both halves would fit properly and thus the decks also of course. Uh, as I told you you have to clean thoroughly this kit, sand, cut the flash, cover some pinholes and constantly dry fitting in order to check its fit so that when the build starts uh, it starts and doesn't stop just because some pieces don't fit. I thought that if I gave first the first coat of white then the yellow would grab better. Uh, I found out later that applying the yellow directly on the black on, with Revell colors um, they feel very well and they don't need uh, any base coat. Um, they transform itself into the color that they that they are um, very easily. Uh, they are very, very good paints. I know that some of you have some complaints about it. I don't. If you thin these paints accordingly, I don't have any kind of complaints about it. I like Revell paints.
After painting the strip stripes, I gave it um, a black panel liner wash. Um, I thought it would make it look a bit uh, better, not as a toy. I also know that HMS hood is kept on the pristine condition. Uh, it's not my intention to weather the ship. It's my intention to show the detail and to make the detail pop up a little bit more and to give it some depth, some texture to the paintwork. This deck had such a good detail that I didn't even use oils or anything to make it look like wood. I just gave it a tone, a deck tan color, base color, and applied an AK wood wash. And it turned out beautifully. Um, that's the, the, the charm of this kit. It's an old kit. On, on one hand, you have a lot of flash, a lot of imperfections, and you almost go crazy with it. And on the other hand, you have such, such good detail and texture to the surface, to the hull, that when you get to see it being built, you kind of say to yourself, man, I hate this kid, but at the same time, I love it. And now the name, the name plaque. Um, I started by a dry brush, then went on top of it with a brush, a gold brush, and um, went on the outside with the black and finished with a gauzy clear coat uh, on top of it. And um, really enjoyed this. Um, I changed the base, the stand of the ship. It was a very old uh, base and I had one here from Portuguese Caravelle which I tried to simulate a uh, wood grain on it and used it for HMS Victory and I believe it turned out much better.
As you can see here, I didn't place the cannons um, on the lower deck. It's kind of a risk that you take. You have to make sure when you attach the decks to the hull that they fit properly and they are exactly where they should be on uh, the hatches because uh, when you are placing the cannons you really want the cannons to hit the proper place right so I had that in mind I took the risk uh, it paid off because um, well I got to detail the bit the cannons work on it clean the flash uh, but if you choose to do like I do, uh, please be careful with that. See what I mean? The more you hate this kit because of the flash, the more you love it because of its beauty.
some small touches on some imperfections due to the, the to the wash on the hull as I told you I don't want to dirty and weather the the ship HMS victory on the other hand I want to make his details uh, pop up so because of this I was just trying to uh, soften a bit the effect of the wash
now the masts. See this huge hole? All masts have one of these. Um, I had to fill it, literally fill it with um, deluxe materials filler, um, sand it and repainted it. Um, I, I have to, you're going to laugh, but I actually thought this was some uh, fit point uh, where I had to uh, place some piece, I don't know, some cable, I don't know, until I just look at it and said, oh my god, this is a hole. So I covered those and uh, cleaned a bit more the masts. the sales uh, all I can tell you is that at this point I was uh, pretty much in love if I can say that by the, with this kit and um, it deserved a bit more of the vac forms the sales that uh, it brings so I grabbed an old sheet uh, on my bed here I have uh, I had an old sheet so I just measured it and this is some uh, experiments with folded uh, sails and opened sails. And I really, really enjoyed and learned a lot with this process. things I really hated on this kit was the red lines. The red lines were awful to say the least. Uh, full of ejector, ejector pin marks. Uh, awful. Just awful. So I said to myself, I'm going to do the red lines all by myself. I don't have any red line tool. I didn't make any jig for it. Um, I started to glue some wires. I had a rope here, thread here at the scale. Either way, uh, I believe, in my humble opinion, that they look much better. And I really, really enjoyed doing this. And I learned a lot again on this subject. see me use on the brush is a super glue accelerator each time you see me use a brush with something to moisten something or you see me just put something on top of a surface without nothing to, to secure that piece or that rope assume that it's wet with super glue accelerator and that the rope has super glue
Cutting the ropes here with the camera on front of me, I couldn't cut exactly on the edge, so later I did that. Also the masts, uh, where the yellow is black and the black is yellow. I noticed that and later, uh, before placing the sails, I just changed the colors to the real ones. After using the molds of the vacform sails, I asked a seamstress to sew the candles, which was the only thing I did not know how to do, as, to, as you can understand. And after that, I just wet, moistened the, the sails in water and white glue. And after that, I painted the sails uh, with um, sail uh, color, okay, and um, let it dry. And the, the sails became, become hard and took the shape of sails touched by the wind, full of wind. sails I just found them um, found it very very dark still very dark for victory so what I did was 
uh, to use a bit of off-white and with an airbrush just marbled uh, paint um, the sails between the sewing lines and that way just weathered and toned down a bit the sail tone color. Raise the sail. Regarding these gun port doors, um, they're yellow as you can see, but I later discovered on a photo that they are all black. So I changed the color uh, more ahead. So more ahead you will see on the hull, the closed ones and the open ones are black. Ready, aim, fire. And now the rigging. Um, I used three types of three uh, different thickness uh, wires. Uh, the masts are the thickest of all um, and then the redundant ones. I don't count with the uh, red lines also. Uh, that makes four actually. Um, I enjoyed very much doing the rigging of this one, although it was a bit of a challenge for me. Thank you. 
thing I can tell you. It's not easy to do all these knots and all this rigging with the um, camera just right in front of you. Here I am following instructions uh, and using a needle to um, punch the, the sails and to just wrap them around uh, the main mast. that uh, beyond covering the holes a few rolls of rope um, would do a very very good detail a very good extra never got to use the vacform sails nor the red lines the plastic ones uh, all I had to do is use a whole bed sheet and uh, ask someone to do some stitching some sewing a sisters because uh, I don't know dick about sewing machines I had to pay just uh, small money for that work and uh, I got 
some new sales. And the work is practically done. I am sorry for the long video. I wanted to show you all the process. It is indeed in my 1959 kit, an old kit. I used the original flags, which, well, turned out okay. Um, if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe if you want. Click on that notification bell. I hope you enjoyed this one, guys. Sorry again for the long video and uh, keep modeling. Always, always with a smile. The smile as big as I got when I look at this finish.
hip hip huzzah. Abandoned ship.